I have tried everything when I was young to lose weight. I would rub myself with a cling wrap and went for a run. I would eat small meals throughout the day to boost my metabolism. I would do excessive amounts of fasted cardio because that was supposed to burn fat faster. There is so much misinformation in fitness industry and some people make such a strong claims that makes you question everything. In this video I will discuss 5 fat loss myths that I think should disappear. Let's start with the one that everyone has heard about. You need to eat little and often to boost your metabolism in order to lose weight. This myth more likely comes from the misunderstanding of body's energy expenditure and misinterpretation of research. Let me explain. We burn calories in four ways. We have the resting energy expenditure, which are all the calories your body burns at rest. Even when you are not actively moving, your body uses energy for basic physiological functions such as breathing, maintaining a heartbeat and regulating body temperature. Then we have the exercise energy expenditure which are all the calories that you burn during exercise. And then there is the non-exercise energy expenditure which are all the calories that your body burn outside of sleeping, eating or exercise. These are things like maintaining good posture, washing dishes or fidgeting. And lastly we have the thermic effect of food. When we eat, our bodies expend energy to digest, absorb and metabolize the nutrients known as the thermic effect of food. This effect is real, but its impact on overall metabolism is very small. And we have many studies to back it up. This study found that meal frequency doesn't significantly affect the thermic effect of food if total calorie intake is the same and that the total energy consumed is more important than meal frequency for fat loss. Here are another two studies that measured this and found no difference in heart rate, body temperature or overall increase in energy expenditure. No matter if you consume one meal or five meals, two or nine, the outcome is the same. There is no study that shows that eating little and often will boost your metabolism if the calorie intake is the same over 24 hours. Ok, now we know that the meal frequency will not boost your metabolism. But will the meal frequency have uh, any impact on overall weight loss? From personal experience and working with clients, I would say that higher meal frequency will actually have a negative effect for some. And that's because people are more likely to overconsume calories if they eat smaller meals throughout the day because they never feel satisfied, never feel full. And maybe that's why intermittent fasting works better for some people because they can eat bigger meals and they can better control their appetite and satiety. In this study, Research compared the diets of 14 females. Seven consumed diet in two meals daily and the other group in three to five meals. There were no significant effects of meal frequency on the rate of weight loss. Now you might say one study with 14 people and you're making a conclusion from that? Okay, hear me out. In this meta-analysis, they analyzed 15 studies with over 500 participants across all studies. And they concluded that there is no significant difference in weight loss or body composition between higher and lower meal frequencies, as long as total calorie intake and macronutrient distribution are equal. In conclusion, meal frequency doesn't matter in terms of fat loss. It comes down to personal preference. So if you are trying to lose weight, focus on meal frequency that suits your lifestyle and helps you to adhere to your calorie deficit. And this brings me to myth number two. Eating in the evening, especially carbs, makes you fat. This myth comes from observational research. But we cannot say that eating late at night will cause weight gain. Observation doesn't imply causation. To illustrate this, we can observe that ice cream cells increase during the summer, but so do drowning incidents. So we could misinterpret the data and say that eating ice cream causes drowning, but in reality they are correlated because they both happen more in summer. But it doesn't mean that eating ice cream causes drowning incidents. So we can observe that most overweight or obese people are eating late at night. But it doesn't mean that eating late at night caused them to gain weight. Most of them could be highly stressed individuals 
having an irregular sleeping and eating patterns, or being involved in parties and drinking. Nothing in fitness, health and nutrition is just black and white. And we have research papers that look at the effects on weight loss in either eating most carbs at dinner or most calories early in the day. For example, in this study, they look at the effects of weight loss diet with carbs eating mostly at dinner. 78 police officers were split into two groups in six months of randomized control trial. One group was provided carbs mostly at dinner and the other throughout the day. The group that was eating carbohydrates mostly at dinner had more significant weight loss, greater waste reduction and greater reduction in absolute body fat percentage. So why this study actually shows that the group that was eating the carbs mostly at dinner had a better outcome than the other group? Maybe because they were able to adhere to their diet better. From personal experience, when I'm dieting, I will try to have most of my calories and most of my carbs in the evening. This is because during the day I can be very busy and in the evening it's time for me to relax and have some fun food, making it easier to stick to my calorie deficit. To conclude, calories don't count for more at night and eating carbs will not affect your weight loss as long as you can adhere to your weekly or daily calorie deficit. Myth number three, diet drinks cause cancer. The chemicals inside them are killing you and because of sweeteners, you are not losing weight. Sweeteners are worse than sugar. Firstly, I want to tell you this. If you're not struggling with weight loss or you're not drinking diet soda, then don't worry. I don't want to encourage you to start drinking diet soda just because I said that they are not unhealthy. And if you don't have the need for sugar or sweeteners, that's great. But if you have heard someone saying that artificial sweeteners are bad for you and that's why you're avoiding them and rather pick the sugary version, this could inform you better. You may have seen those videos of people in a supermarkets, sometimes without shirts on, holding the diet soda and screaming at the camera, oh, don't drink this, it's full of chemicals and blah, blah. You know, technically everything is made from chemicals. They say things like if you drink diet soda, your body will release insulin and you will stop burning fat. Therefore, you will not lose weight. But this never been shown. And if you, if you eat chicken, and rice, your body will release insulin anyway, this is a normal process. But sweeteners, they don't do that, your body will not release insulin if you consume sweeteners. Interestingly, there are studies that indicate that people who drink diet soda on weight loss diet lose more weight than those who drink water, which is possibly from reduced sweet cravings and being able to adhere to the diet. And then we have the other group of people uh, that they say that uh, diet sodas will cause you cancer because they are carcinogenic. Okay, we can look at this rationally as well. There are three groups of carcinogen. Group number one, these are carcinogenic to humans. Alcohol, smoking, UV, obesity. Group number 2A, probably carcinogenic to humans. Processed meat, night shift work. Group 2B, possibly carcinogenic to humans. Wireless communication devices and aspartame, the sweetener. So if you are worried that you can get cancer from drinking one soda a day, maybe you will be better off stop using your smartphone as well. In conclusion, diet drinks can be used as a strategy to satisfy cravings when dieting and there is no strong evidence of negative effects on health. Myth number four, will fasted cardio enhance fat loss? There is a common belief that if you perform cardio, first thing in the morning on an empty stomach, your body will be forced burn more fat than if you do it after a meal due to lower levels of glycogen stores. While technically this is true that your body will oxidize more fat during low intensity cardio first thing in the morning after a long overnight fast, but it doesn't mean that we are losing more fat over 24 hour period. And why is that? Because total calorie matter the most. It doesn't matter if you are burning carbs or fat during exercise, as long as you have created caloric deficit over 24 hour period. For example, this study found no significant differences between groups following a weight loss program, with one group training before breakfast and the other training after breakfast. And this study came to the same conclusion when testing interval trading in fat or fasted state. So why are so many bodybuilders walking up on a treadmill at 4am and are absolutely shredded then? 
Most bodybuilders will dieting for so long that their body will naturally reduce their need, their movement overall. So this strategy is one of the strategies that they have in their toolbox to increase the overall energy expenditure. And it might be a strategic choice for bodybuilders to do the extra cardio in the morning on an empty stomach and then lift weights after they fuel up the body. Fasted cardio is not magic bullet for fat loss. The most important factor is the overall calorie balance. If fasted cardio suits your lifestyle and doesn't negatively impact your performance, then there is no harm of doing it. Myth number five, skipping breakfast makes you fat. This myth comes from the idea that skipping breakfast will put your body into starvation mode, causing you hold on fat. Additionally, eating breakfast is supposed to boost your metabolism and reduce the total calorie intake throughout the day, helping you lose weight. However, this belief is largely based on observational studies of breakfast skippers. But those are more likely people who also have higher alcohol consumption and irregular sleeping or eating patterns. Observing higher body max index in a certain population doesn't necessarily mean that skipping breakfast is the cause. To illustrate this, we can observe that during summer, ice cream sales increase, but also drowning incidents. But yet we wouldn't say that eating ice cream causes drowning incidents. Correlation doesn't imply causation. Let's look at the assumption that if you skip breakfast, you will overeat more during the day. This study looked at exactly that and found that yes, breakfast eaters would eat 17% calories less during lunchtime than breakfast skippers. However, in terms of calorie intake over breakfast and lunch, breakfast skippers still consume less calories overall than breakfast eaters. The media would highlight that the breakfast skippers overeaten by 17% but the breakfast skippers still ate less calories overall than the breakfast eaters. This study from 2014 investigated whether skipping 700 calorie breakfast led to overeating later. While breakfast skippers did eat an extra 161 calories throughout the day, they still consumed 539 calories less overall compared to those who ate breakfast. Regarding the claim that breakfast will boost your metabolism, we can again look at research and find that it's true that your metabolism will increase after breakfast, but it will also increase after every other meal. However, over 24 hour period, there is no difference in energy expenditure between breakfast eaters and skippers when overall energy intake is the same. In conclusion, skipping breakfast doesn't automatically make you fat and your body will not go to starvation mode. It's all about how much you eat overall, not when you eat it. Breakfast can be a part of healthy diet, but it's not necessary for everyone. Find what works for you and your body.